Hello, it's Friday, December 10th, 2021, and on today's Hilarious Headlines, we're going to be covering a story where an animal visited an elementary school, and sh- shockingly, that animal could talk. Unfortunately, what that animal said may have been a little inappropriate for the children of that elementary school. What did it say? Stay tuned to find out. Hey there and welcome to another episode of Hilarious Headlines and today I chose this article specifically because I had a job at one point in my life where on every Friday we called it HR Fridays meaning we could say whatever we wanted and we were immune to getting penalized or yelled at or scolded by HR. Now obviously we made that rule up but within our own little circle of friends there at that job that's what we call it HR Fridays and today's story seems a little bit like that the crow uh, apparently involved in the story was a part of HR Fridays so this one is from the Oregonian um, friendly foul-mouthed crow befriends entire Oregon elementary school before state police are called in uh, so right off the bat, I mean, we have a crow that is swearing and the state police are involved for some reason. This is a banger, all right? So let's dive into the story here. Now for those watching, um, you can see this picture here, but I'll describe it to those who are just listening. Um, there's a picture of a crow with a hat on. It looks to be a homemade hat. And uh, the caption here says, Cosmo the talking crow in a hat made by Daphne Colpron. So that caption literally does not explain anything. Like, I'm supposed to know who this Daphne person is. Apparently the, the crow's name is Cosmo. I mean, this is just already an insane story, and we haven't even gotten to the opening paragraph of the article yet. Uh, which brings me to my next topic, the opener. Here we go. A friendly, if somewhat foul-mouthed, crow became a temporary mascot at Allendale Elementary School in November when the bird took up residence at the Grants Pass School. Quote, this crow showed up at our school just out of the blue one morning, unquote, said Naomi Imel, an education assistant at Allendale over the phone on Thursday. It began looking into classrooms, Imel said, and pecking on doors. At one point, it made its way into a fifth grade classroom where it, quote, helped itself to some snacks, unquote, she said. Imel said the bird wasn't aggressive at all and seemed to love the kids. It landed on some people's heads, she said. And she added, it spoke. The bird could say, what's up? And I'm fine. And, quote, a lot of swear words. <laughs> it was like a parrot, Imel said. It was the weirdest thing. Still, because it was a wild animal that wouldn't leave, the school called animal control. Um, well, some could say that about me, and my wife still is not called animal control, so I guess I am still in the clear. I may not be as foul-mouthed as this crow. Uh, it was quite the production, she said. Animal control came out and decided it was not in their jurisdiction to catch the crow. Um, what? Then, a wildlife officer from Oregon State Police came to the scene. That officer was able to feed it from his hand, Imel said. They didn't want to net it because if they missed, it would remember. Excuse me? (laughs) Um, Also, doesn't this kind of like, doesn't this kind of, it's eerily similar to like a plot line from Super Troopers, right? Like wasn't the plot of that movie, local police versus the state police, Um, state police, Literally, like the local police couldn't handle catching a bird in an elementary school, so then the state police has to come in all tough. Uh, that's exactly what this reminds me of. Um, but if it was in that movie, the reason it wouldn't be in that movie is because you would say, this is just too ridiculous. Obviously, this is a situation in which this would never happen. Well, here we are in real life, and it's happening. Um, according to... I, uh, here we go. Uh, nope, hold on. Did we miss a spot? Nope, we're here. According to IML... All the great, and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that name wrong, I-M-E-L, however the heck you say it. 
According to IML, all the grades came out to witness the attempted capture of the talkative crow. The crow seemed to enjoy the attention, playfully chasing kids around the track, she said. We thought it would fly away, but it didn't, IML added. The kids were like magnets. Ultimately, the wildlife trooper was unable to capture the crow, who spent the night of November 29th outside the school. Sounds like the crow was just screwing with him. It turns out, talking crows aren't just something out of an Edgar Allan Poe poem. Um, and this crow, or possibly, uh, and this crow, or possibly, and more in line with Poe, Raven, knows at least for, that is the most confusing sentence I've ever read in my life. Let's start again. And this crow, or possibly, and more in line with Poe, Raven, knows at least 40 words. I don't know what half that sentence, like it's word vomit, I guess, but let's just say the crow knew 40 words. Uh, he knows a lot of words, I'm not gonna lie, said Daphne Colpron on Thursday. His vocabulary has expanded quite a bit in the last few weeks. So not only is he smart, but he's learning, allegedly. Uh, Colpron knows a good deal about the crow, or possibly Raven, who also may be female, there we go, because her mother rescued the bird about two years ago when it was a baby, bringing it home to the family's farm in Williams from a shelter and naming it Cosmo. There's the tie-in. The family has dogs, including a mastiff named Tonka Trunk, Colpern said. Cosmo will say, Tonka, you come inside. Or he'll say, dogs out, she said. Sometimes he does use profanity, Colpern added. Well, let me tell you, Colpern, you're the one using profanity because this bird is not reading the dictionary and brushing up on his English skills on his own. He's learning it from somewhere. Colpern's mom, Janelle Shattuck, considers Cosmo part of the family. In the mornings, she said, he will go right to my bedroom window and say, Mom, wake up, wake up. Um, that's my raven voice. I, she said it sounded like a parrot. I don't know. I've never heard a raven talk. There's a daycare in the neighborhood, and Cosmo loves kids, Colburn said. As soon as he found out what time the kids got there, she said, he'd go over there and hang out. Uh, Shattuck is a rescuer of animals, but Cosmo is extra special to her. She considers him a free bird. Great song, by the way. Uh, but also has a close personal attachment to him. And so, when he disappeared after she came back from an out-of-town Thanksgiving, I was devastated, she said. He's like a person, not a bird. Well, I got some news for you, uh, Shattuck. It is a bird. <laughs> um, at first, Shattuck was concerned that Cosmo had been killed. That's a quick jump to conclusions. Okie dokie. Um, it seems that while some neighbors loved Cosmo as much as Shattuck and Culprin, not everyone was quite as thrilled with the talking, person-loving bird. Cosmo is not aggressive. Everyone involved with him agreed. But, said Culprin, if people are scared of Cosmo, he finds that a little funny. Is this bird, like, the smartest thing that's ever lived? Like, is it just a satient being that's, like, plotting to kill all of us? What are you... Why is this bird so brilliant and then, like, I've never come across a crow that is, you know, like this? He will get obnoxious, she added, saying he likes to tease people. This bird kind of sounds like a dick. Uh, While well, the family was gone for Thanksgiving, they said a neighbor captured the bird and took him to a local animal sanctuary. The sanctuary, not realizing he was habituated to humans, released him, likely in Grant's past. This is a crazy story. So, let me get this straight. The family leaves for Thanksgiving, has this bird, loves this bird, and then the neighbor comes over, captures it, and brings it to an animal sanctuary? That's messed up, neighbor, and you get every bit of what's coming to you. This bird's back, he's gonna tease you, and he's gonna be probably dropping F-bombs at you at five in the morning. Uh, once he was out, Shattuck said he started looking for home, causing quite the stir in town. Cosmo would sit on top of Planet Fitness, talking to people who were going in, Shattuck said. He was looking for me. Well, Planet Fitness notoriously has that lunk alarm, so he probably wasn't allowed inside because if he started swearing, that alarm's gonna go off and that bird's gonna lose his membership. So probably smart on the bird to not go in there. Uh, Shattuck posted on Facebook about the lost bird, hoping to find him. Journalistic integrity, my friends. Earlier in the article, it was mentioned that they thought it was a female. Now, all of a sudden, they flipped it to him. What's going on here? Uh, after following a family friend in a truck, Shattuck and Culpron think he recognized Cosmo ended up at Allendale. That elementary school we're talking about. He went to the only kid I know in Allendale and knocked on the door, Shattuck said. When he was in the school, he was jumping around saying, it's okay, I'm fine. Wait a minute. 
He went to the only kid I know in Allendale and knocked on the door, Shattuck said. When he was in the school, he was jumping around saying, it's okay, I'm fine. Wait a minute, is the bird... It's just confusing because they mentioned it was a female earlier. Now, now they're using the pronoun he. What are we talking about? If this, if they're referring to the bird in this sentence, this has to be the craziest part of the story. Also creepy, where Shaq's like uh, just walking up to a random kid in the high, in the elementary school, like in the middle of the day. What kind of security does the school have, right? Uh, that was the fifth grade classroom where Cosmo found snacks. That night, when the kid relayed the story of the talking crow to his father, the father called Shattuck. Colpron went the next day to collect Cosmo. It took about 45 minutes of me offering sardines, she said. She petted it. Well, if it took 45 minutes for you to corral this bird, chances are the bird doesn't really like you that much. If it's so smart, then you should heed its... Not heed, that's the wrong word. You know what I'm saying. She should have listened to its wishes and been like, listen, maybe it doesn't want to go home. Maybe it likes being free. Because I don't know, it's a bird. Uh, she petted the bird and waited until his eyes were closed and then grabbed him. Oh, that seems violent. Copron thinks he's happy to be home. He hasn't been back to visit the neighbors who captured him. Yeah, well, obviously. But while the story of Cosmo, the talking crow or raven, and his or her family is sweet, Oregon State Police would rather you don't take the wrong inspiration from it. Quote, We don't want people making pets out of wild animals, said OSP spokesperson Stephanie Bigman. If they had contained this bird, it would have been a wildlife offense. That would have been good. Just start arresting all the kids in the middle of the day for hanging out with a bird. <laughs> for now, though, Cosmo is free and back home, and the children of Allendale have a story to tell their cousins this holiday season that no one is going to believe. Well, I don't know if I believe it, to be perfectly honest with you. Something sounds fishy. Something's a little bit off about this one here, but uh, no, I'm just kind of kidding around. I mean, that's a pretty wild story, and um, I love that the crow just starts swearing in the middle of the day to, in a, a bunch of elementary school kids around. I mean, I think that's absolutely hilarious. So I hope you enjoyed the story. I thought it was a funny one. And, uh, you know, next time you see a crow in the wild, start yelling at it. Maybe he'll start talking to you. I think that's the lesson to take away from, uh, from this article today. Um, but thanks for coming again. I really appreciate it. This is the last one for the week. We'll see you next week on Monday. Uh, we stream the, I'm sorry, we don't stream these. We produce these Monday through Friday. They come out. So um, have a great weekend. And remember to share this video or comment. You know, any, any anything that comes to your head that you'd like to share with me, like it or subscribe to my channel here. Um, it would really mean a lot. So have a great rest of your day. Have a great weekend. And we will see you back here on Monday.